Hello everybody. <coughs> Hope you are all doing well. And are all safe uh, at home or uh, on ships. I think this uh, Omicron has, uh, even though it has created a lot of havoc, uh, I think the governments are now realizing. Uh, and in India, uh, Maharashtra, where I stay, has told we'll be starting school soon, even though the numbers are picking up. And uh, you all know, UK has uh, you know removed all restrictions. So I think uh, we, it's, it's high time we all uh, start living with the uh, virus and uh, move on with our lives. Uh, it has already taken two years of our life, so I, I think we should not uh, uh, have its way uh, anymore now. So let's all fight together. Uh, always uh, follow uh, CAP. And uh, going into the video today, we'll be covering the International Maritime Organization. We have been talking a lot of uh, lot about IMO, but we are not actually discussed what it is, how it has come, and all those things. Uh, all the conventions we have we have seen MLC, STCW, everything is coming from uh, uh, IMO. So I, I think we sh it deserves a uh, small video on. Uh, what is history and how it came about you know? and, and basically the convention you know, how, how the shipping industry started uh, uh, getting regularized like this what what are the uh, kick points you know so that's that's uh, what we are going to see in this video uh, it will be quite interesting uh, the history uh, maybe most of the people don't know so keep watching till the end thank you so much take care Hello everyone, let's dive into the video now, uh, we will be covering uh, International Maritime Organization. Okay, uh, let me tell something about uh, IMO first before we actually go into uh, uh, what is it, what is structure and all those and how the uh, convention gets ratified, uh, who brings in the convention, how is the process, so all those things we will be covering in this video. So start with the uh, we'll start with a small history of uh, uh, IMO, which was actually called the IMCO, you know, uh, International Intergovernmental Maritime uh, or Consultative Organization. Okay, Intergovernmental Maritime Consultative Organization was the first name given to uh, IMO. Uh, uh, before the before what was there before IMO? Uh, IMO was established in uh, what I think 1948. Okay, uh, 1948 uh, it was established. So uh, before that, what was happening? Uh, how how were the rules being made? You know, now we know IMO, 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 everything IMO. But before IMO, what was there? So United Nations was the uh, whole and soul of all maritime uh, conventions also. And uh, they had uh, uh, made this uh, convention, uh, Safety of Life at Sea. You are all very aware uh, of the 1912 Titanic. After that, in 1914, they made this convention, uh, SOLAS. Okay, and they had some oil coal, all those things they were having, you know. But the, uh, as the shipping was uh, booming then, so they felt uh, it is necessary that we should have a separate organization for this. Hence, uh, uh, IMO came into being. IMO, as I told, it was Intergovernmental Maritime Consultative Organization, which was established in 1948. But actually, uh, you know, bringing all the countries together, it was itself a big, big uh, exercise. You know, so actually, the first time IMCO actually met was in 1959. Can you believe it? It's almost 11 years. Uh, before they actually met, you know, after uh, making that uh, IMCO, so that was that was that. Uh, so uh, uh, then uh, we had uh, other other uh, uh, conventions. Then then IMCO actually started uh, expanding their uh, future. Then the next next one immediately was after Solas. So the first task when uh, it came into being, uh, or United Nations told was. Uh, this Solas convention is in pathetic state, you should take up first that. So they took up Solas first and they improved it. Then we have, then we had one 1961, uh, 60 uh, convention uh, of Solas and then uh, the 74th convention finally came about. Okay, so that, that's how the Solas uh, developed, you know. 
and uh, immediately we had this uh, Tory Canyon also in between, uh, so 1969 I think. So uh, again, uh, this uh, convention of Marpol had to be there. There was one already. Uh, there was a convention, old convention. So again, so last, uh, sorry, IMO had to pick it up. Imco had to pick it up, uh, and uh, they also developed this uh, Marpol 7378. Okay, and actually this INCO became IMO when 1982. 1982, that was this big uh, name, so let's make it short. So they made it International Maritime Office. Okay, so let's see what's, what's written in the slide. About IMO, I think I have given a brief uh, introduction. Uh, I think there's much more uh, than enough uh, of knowing what is the way, what, 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 what do you know about uh, IMO. Now present status headquartered in London, so we have a London headquarter. Uh, we have uh, we have offices there. Uh, you know, people are sitting there. So we'll we'll go into that uh, in the later slide. So totally, not as of today, there are 175 member countries. So basically, members uh, make up the assembly, what it is called. Like you have this. Lok Sabha in uh, India, it is it's very similar like what, what government you have, right? Anyway, any country, you will have a democratic government, you have a assembly where uh, all the uh, politicians or the uh, who are elected become and sit. Something similar, you know, we have here where uh, representative from the 175 member countries uh, come and sit in the assembly. Okay? So assembly is basically for the countries, the states. Okay, then 40 members in the council. Okay, uh, what is a council? Is basically they take out of 175, there are 40 members who uh, run the show. It is like uh, if you have a society in India, you have a managing committee sort of a thing, you know, something like that. Okay, so that is 40, and they are changed every two years. Okay. So, council uh, is what uh, uh, it has, 40 countries, out of the 175 countries, 40 countries will be the council. Others will be all uh, members, uh, these 40 will be rotation on, will be the council members. The 300 employees in the secretariat. Secretariat is what? Uh, we have not heard this term before. Secretariat basically uh, like admin department, you know, they run, they look after the day-to-day -day operations of IMO. Okay. So basically, uh, the, the, you have a secretary general, and below that you have a lot of departments. We'll not go into uh, depth into those departments. So uh, basically, you have a secretary general, and then uh, he runs the day-to-day -day operations of international maritime. Okay, and uh, how how do they get the salary? The secretariat. How do they get the salary? It's all from our pockets. Okay, like uh, how, how our pockets because these 175 countries, 175 countries pay for the uh, funding of the running of the uh, international maritime organization. Okay, the government pays, so Indian government, India is also uh, uh, a member to the uh, IMO. Hence, obviously, you know, the tax, our tax money is going to uh, maintenance of the IMO. Okay. Uh, but most of the receivers don't pay tax, that's, that's a different story, uh, but whoever is in the office, maybe, maybe they are contributing. Yeah. <coughs> Structure of IMO, uh, we just saw in a brief what, how, how was this, I'll have a proper, uh, graph made here so that you will be more clear, clear on how the structure is there you know this is the main assembly assembly covers all the uh, what do you say 175 countries they come and they meet every two years they sit and then they discuss they take the uh, new conventions or you know they see is there any other requirements required rules to be changed all those things are discussed in the assembly. Okay. Below this comes the council. As we discussed, it is part of the assembly. Uh, it's a smaller chunk. It's 40 countries of the assembly, and they keep uh, changing every two years. Uh, and they uh, they they are the first 
people who uh, the committees who come to make the rules uh, come to you know for operating so they they are the managing committee sort of okay the next uh, is the committee committee is uh, uh, again part of uh, the uh, oh, what do you say the main imo structure they they, they are the technical people who are actually develop these conventions you know so there are totally five committees so we'll be seeing that in the next slide uh, these committees actually make the convention they are the people who actually will see there is is there a requirement for a new convention or uh, uh, you know they will uh, do the investigation they do keep on researching on how we can improve the uh, conventions uh, compliance to the conventions and uh, reduce uh, pollution etc there are there are so many hundreds of things they will be researching on okay so so overall improvement of the shipping industry and next we have the sub committee sub committee is again below the uh, committee and they they feed into the committee sub committee feeds into committee committee feeds into council council feeds into assembly okay that is something like that so sub committee supports these committees uh, there are basically seven sub committees uh, technical sub committees so again we will not go into so depth uh, what you need to know is the main major structure what uh, of the imo and i think this is more than enough and we have a small uh, what do you say part which is the secretariat what we mentioned in the uh, last slide uh, about the uh, secretary general and other working staff i think there are 300 staff in the secretary so who help in the admin functions uh, of the iim okay next again we will go uh, as i mentioned we will have a uh, say detailed uh, uh, flow diagram of what how a structure of iim is made so as i mentioned uh, uh, assembly assembly and below assembly you have the council members assembly as of now has 175 as of october 21 then you have the council there is 40 members you have then you have the secretary uh, which is again reporting to the assembly secretariat uh, and uh, where it's a separate part which runs the admin functions of uh, the imo then these are the committees there are five committees maritime environment the production committee maritime safety committee then you have the legal committee then you have the technical cooperation committee then you have the facilitation so these are the five major uh, or five major parts of imo which actually make the convention so these are the five committees which are there in the uh, imo and below this you have uh, sub committees are not for the names you have different names for this and they have recently changed the names also but i have not uh, mentioned basically both are uh, uh, you know the all the seven committees are uh, below it's really equally managed by uh, marine environmental protection committee and uh, msc that is maritime safety committee these two combinedly manage the seven sub committees okay Involved production is Marpol, safety is Solas. Okay, these are the two major chunks. You know, uh, you can see, you can say there are four pillars to uh, the IMO. You know, uh, that we will see in the next uh, slide. We have four pillars, and we will see what are the four pillars. Okay. so let's see now how we are going to uh, you know how how does the convention come into process you know how how they come into being uh, why we need so many conventions how do they get ke, okay we should have smart convention okay we should have so how does it come into being so first what happens is uh, draft stage it comes to the draft stage who makes this draft it is the, the the draft stage is come by the made by the committee okay draft is made by the committee and which are assisted by the sub committee why will sub committee and committee make this draft because there is a big huge accident like hurricane in happened titanic happened so they felt there is a need that you know we should have some new convention because the present regulations are not uh, stopping the accidents or you know uh, removing the accidents from the system so that can be one uh, reason 
the second uh, reason can be as i mentioned there are lot of researches happening you know uh, in the future of shipping how we should we can be more fuel efficient uh, more environmental friendly uh, you know more eff effective more uh, efficiently we can carry more cargo all these researches are continuously happening so out of that also we can have a convention which can be drafted and said uh, that we need a new convention which is the regulations which is uh, by this no so these are the draft so this comes uh, the draft stage where uh, you know the committee and the subcommittee uh, make this draft and and uh, it is also possible that uh, you know member state can suggest because they are having uh, some uh, they are also having their research centers and they have uh, uh, research capability and they are doing their own research and uh, they can also propose a convention that uh, boss we feel we should have this uh, uh, so that we can all work together and it will be good for the whole maritime industry hence uh, this can be proposed so that also comes to the committee so they go through the uh, draft and then they if 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 they feel uh, it is uh, good to go and uh, they also feel the importance of uh, this draft which is presented by the flagship then they will present it to either council members or the assembly okay so that's the next stage adoption stage adoption stage what happens in this the draft is made draft is made and it given to the all the members okay it it, it is distributed by the uh, uh, committee uh, or the council members to all the assembly members that is all the flag state members of imo it is distributed uh, this is the draft we are thinking of implementing please give your inputs okay then what happens uh, all it all goes to the all the member states and member state they will they will have a lot of legal advice uh, there will be lot of industry experts everybody so they will combine put their mind together and they will tell uh, this can be implemented this cannot be implemented this is not correct this is right all those things will be there okay and uh, this this process all well very very slow as i mentioned you know even the imo it took a uh, lot of time in establishing similarly there is that there is one recent uh, convention of balas matter that also take to, took a long long time to get uh, uh, you know implemented because a uh, lot of requirements uh, need to be confirmed all the countries should agree uh, we will come to the approval stage also how did it get ratified so that also we will come to so presently we are in the adoption stage so what happens there is a, a draft uh, resolution uh, draft uh, convention made that is uh, distributed to all the countries all the flag state members and those members give their inputs uh, to the uh, committee okay the committee again goes through all the inputs and then they finalize the draft they finalize the draft then they call for a meeting so all the member countries comes and they are again presented the final draft of the uh, convention and asked to vote okay so once uh, once the voting is done and it is uh, going positive then they will tell okay this will come into as a convention then comes the ratification stage ratification stage again once the adoption stage then uh, all the countries will take okay we have we are uh, principally okay with it but if we, if we have to make it into a rule then we have to again take it back to our governments and governments have to uh, ratify this convention okay the uh, the government will tell okay we agree to the convention and they are supposed to uh, specifically uh, send it to the uh, im okay they have a written format where they have to send it if if the representative has not signed it during the meeting itself okay uh, mostly the representative signs it in the meeting if not then it goes to the uh, convention it goes to the country for ratification so they tell okay whenever it comes into force we will put into it uh, put it in use for our flagships okay for india then it will be an indian flagship they can implement similarly panama will apply for panama something like that okay then the last stage comes which is the entry into force from the ratification stage to entry into force you know there will be some gap uh, again ratification also as i mentioned i i told you i'll tell you later the basically the function is that the the draft uh, uh, convention will have in itself how the convention is going to come into force okay they will tell it it all depends on uh, how serious or how important is this convention so based on that they will decide 
how many countries need to confirm if they accept for the convention to enter enter into force okay that will be mentioned in the draft uh, convention so 33% 40% 50% whatever it is there it will be mentioned in the draft convention that once the 33% of the uh, members have accepted the uh, convention draft convention it will come into force okay then uh, after come after the uh, last country is signing uh, they will have some uh, buffer so that people will have uh, time to get into uh, the convention you know like uh, there was this uh, double l which was included that there was amendment you know so uh, to the sola so uh, then it had a, uh, they then they had given some timeline you know ki uh, uh, ships constructed after this date should have compulsorily ships before this date we have a different phasing uh, phasing out uh, time something like that okay so again for new convention also it is very similar where uh, you know they will tell ki this is the uh, coming into force date and this will be when when should the ships comply also will be given in the convention of uh, how how the convention will be implemented on board the ship okay uh, i think uh, that's it uh, with regards to uh, the uh, imo what are the conventions what are the part of imo and how the convention it comes into force and everything thank you so much for being with me uh, uh, till the uh, end of the video i hope you have uh, got good information about imo and uh, the conventions uh, how they come into force uh, keep watching the videos i am i am very sure uh, you are getting more information please share it with uh, your friends and colleagues uh, uh, so that uh, uh, you know you they also get the information uh, knowledge what you are getting okay so we have uh, our website these are the four websites what we have maritime platform.com seafarersclan.com seafarersblog.com and shipshowjob.com/careers so please go through these websites uh, i'm sure you will get much more information clan seafarers clan is a question and answer uh, website seafarer blog is a uh, blogging website uh, shipshowjob.com is uh, slash careers is uh, the careers website for shore job in the maritime industry especially we are catering to indian requirements we can cater for other countries as well and these are our handles on twitter linkedin facebook and instagram so please uh, go and follow us uh, yeah and you can see all the videos which are coming immediately as soon as we post okay thank you so much uh, have a nice day take care be safe uh, follow covid appropriate behavior but uh, don't uh, fear covid and uh, let's let's start uh, beginning to live with it rather than uh, fear and sit at home yeah Thank you so much take care bye